Hello, I'm John DeLee, and welcome to my wood shop here in the big woods of Northwest Missouri. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey as we look at the various aspects of fine woodworking. I started my journey in fine woodworking when I was just a, a young, young lad following along behind my grandfather as he would do various building projects. My grandfather could build a home from the foundation up and did. Uh, and if that house needed uh, wood flooring, he'd put wood flooring in it. If it needed cabinets, he would build cabinetry. Vanities, he did that. If it, ne if it needed furniture, like a pie chest, or a table, or chairs, my, my grandpa would do that. Papa Beatty, I called him affectionately. And he had a major influence on my life in a lot of different ways and taught me many things. One thing peculiar about my grandfather, he liked to paint things battleship gray. So you'll notice in my shop that I followed the tradition and you can see that I like to use a little gray in my projects as well. Not a whole lot, but some. My wife accuses me of wanting to use it for everything, but uh, I do like to use it. It just brings back a lot of fond memories. So I'm starting a YouTube channel or a, uh, a channel to demonstrate uh, and to bring out the, the fine details or the details of fine woodworking uh, that, that I like to do. And it's, it's a journey. It's going to be different, I believe, you'll find, than many channels. It's going to be educational. That's my background. I taught for many years and retired here recently. And so now I'm putting my, most of my attention, a lot of my attention, into my passion of, of woodworking. So it's going to emphasize, it's going to have an educational element to it. And hopefully it will be uh, a sharing. So I would be doing some lecture, getting feedback from you. And as I get that feedback, I'll be coming back maybe with some questions that you might have or some ideas that you might have, and we'll share back and forth. It's also going to be demonstrating because I believe we learn best when we can actually see other people and how they do it. And so that's why I like the whole idea of having a, a channel. And then there's going to be guided practice. I'm going to invite you to come along with me in the projects that I'm doing and have you uh, participate with me. And again, share with me and share your ideas with me as well. So that's going to make it unique. Also, our channel here is going to emphasize, it's all going to be project-based. And as we do it, we're going to emphasize the various aspects, as I mentioned, of fine woodworking. So if I'm demonstrating how to use an old wooden molding plane. This is one I picked up at an antique store. It's gonna be in relationship to how we could use that on a piece of fine furniture or maybe a build-in. And so you'll actually see me use these and demonstrate these in relationship to a project. And I would invite you to come along with me. And if you have one of these or if you pick up one of these or are interested in it, you could actually Come along with me as we do it. And if not, it might just tweak an, an interest that you would have in, uh, in fine woodworking. If we use a hand plane, then it will be in relationship to how we use it on a piece of furniture. You'll notice, too, in our projects that everything I do gets touched with hand tools. The reason being is I believe we should always go back to the fundamentals of our trade. Like with so many things in life, we keep going back to those fundamentals and we build those and we make those stronger, the simple fundamental aspects of what we do. And so we become better and better at other things in our, in our craft, in our trade. So everything we do will be touched by some hand tools. So a number of reasons, number one, the fundamentals. Number two, some things are just more efficient with hand tools. I can take my little sweet number one, uh, Lee Nelson, uh, plain and I could just put just ever so light of a shaving on the edge of a board or maybe a, a drawer to get it fit to fit just just so to my liking or I can take the, the big number eight hand plane and maybe smooth out a tabletop so you'll be seeing me sometimes just a couple strokes with a hand plane taking off three or four thousandths of an inch it's just what it needs to make it perfect You'll also see me use some of the older tools that I have, such as maybe a miter saw. 
to, to do a little cutting. Why? Because it's just more efficient uh, in some cases. Or maybe a molding plane or a scraper or whatever the job may call for. Maybe a, a spoke shave that, that we'll be using. Okay? So it's going to be fun in that sense. My projects are going to emphasize several important things. Number one, safety. General shop safety for sure. So we'll talk about eye protection. Nobody wants to go through life half blind or blind. So we'll be emphasizing, everyone. when you see me working on projects, you'll see me with a pair of safety glasses. Okay? Hearing. You don't want to go through life and have a constant ringing in your ear. So you'll hear, you'll see me emphasize ear, ear protection, uh, hearing protection. And one that we don't think about a lot as woodworkers, but is so important, you'll see me have a dust mask of some type when I'm using tools that require it. Now, I have some real nice power tools here, uh, simple but nice. I have a nice table saw, a saw, saw stop that takes a lot of the dust, like 98% of the dust it claims to take, and I think it does. I have an overhead air filtration system and a nice um, vacuum system, dust collection system here. But still, that doesn't protect you from some of the finer dust. So if I'm doing cut some table saw where I'm getting some of that residual dust or the router table, then you'll see me wearing this type of protection to protect my lungs. So that's one thing is safety. That's going to be a huge component of what we emphasize here with every project that we do because I want to be safe and I go home to my wife at night with all my fingers and toes and eyes and ears and so forth, and I want you to as well. Another thing that I'm going to really bring out too is the uh, best practices of hand tools and of machine tools. And so you'll see me talk about that and also the best practices in the shop. You'll hear me talk a lot about efficiency and efficient methods and best methods of making things efficient. And that has to do a little bit with my background as well. So I taught technology for many years at, uh, on all levels, high school and college and adult. And, uh, and so I emphasize efficiency in design. So you'll hear me talk about things like 5S and Six Sigma and Demaic and some of those terms if you're not familiar with them, you will be, it won't take you too long to get on board here because we'll be talking about those. Also, I'll be talking about other design features, uh, sketching and board drawing and computer-aided drafting. You'll hear me talk about some of those things. So yes, we definitely use technology, but again, everything goes back to the fundamentals when we're done. And then I think the the last emphasis that I want to mention that this is going, my class, my uh, channel is going to emphasize is going to be just good, common sense, simple uh, designs, okay? Most of the stuff that I build and make, um, I, I do it myself. I come up with designs and ideas and, and I build those. Now, that's not to say that that's totally original. I don't think we can say that. We've been influenced by so many things in our life. I might see a piece of furniture and it gives me an idea. I may see several pieces and then all those collectively come together. I might make a quick sketch of something that I see in a hotel or a bed and breakfast that's happened before that I really like and take some pictures of it and from that develops ideas. And I think all of us are that way to a large extent. If I do use a set of plans that I get from someplace else or a major idea from somebody, I will try to give credit to where credit is due. I'll try to make a point to do that, to let you know where I got the plans and, and what I did. So that's pretty much the sum of what we're gonna be doing here. Uh, I'm gonna post uh, videos on a regular basis here on my channel and I'm gonna invite you to come along and share with me and give us some feedback and we'll form just a community of like-minded people who just for the love of woodworking and fine woodworking like to get together and uh, like to, to share our ideas with each other. So if you have some ideas, be sure to do that. So thank you very much for coming along on this journey with me. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Until then, happy woodchips.